I've been really fascinated with California Mission Furniture because the real early Mission Furniture was made with the, the most basic tools and materials, but it still manages to be, I don't know, kind of graceful and elegant? Anyway, I was browsing around and I saw this picture. This is the dining room at La Purissima Mission, and it's sparse, but there's a lot going on, a lot of interesting furniture pieces. But the thing that really caught my eye was this little bench off to the side. I know, it's not so impressive at first, but you have to give it a second. It's really well proportioned and kind of graceful, even though it's just made from thick, nailed together boards. I like the angles of the legs and the efficient construction. There's nothing wasted here. You'd expect such a simple piece to be totally undecorated, but look at the feet. They've been cut into a fine Roman OG shape. This bench could have been completely plain, but that one detail, combined with the angles and proportions, it gives the bench some grace and elegance in a harsh environment. I had to build one. But recreating a whole piece just from one photograph, that is not so easy. I went into SketchUp and threw together kind of a quick model. It was tough because I didn't have any dimensions to go on. I don't know how tall or wide the original piece is. I started with some benches that I've made before to get a reasonable height and a comfortable size for the seat, but beyond that, it was guesswork. So then I had a set of plans, but I was not confident in them. I thought, these are, these are guaranteed to be wrong. So you know what? I'm gonna build a prototype. I'll build it from the plans that I've got, and I will find all the mistakes, all the things I don't like. Then I'll build the real one, and that one will be great. So I built the prototype, and you know what happened? It's perfect. I, I like it exactly the way it is. The shape, the details, the angles, it's all right on. If I had just pointed the camera at the workbench while I was making this, the video would be done. But I didn't do that. So I guess today, we're building another one. Mission furniture was typically built from scrub oak and ponderosa pine, and you cannot get either of those in Ohio. So I'm building this thing out of red oak. I think southern yellow pine would be another good choice. You need about eight feet of lumber to build the whole thing, and it's an economical project. And the easy first step is breaking the stock down. I always like to experiment with a few new techniques in each build, and I tried some different cross-cutting methods, but nothing works nearly as well as my new lightweight traveler workbench. I did a whole video on this last week, and it is a sawing machine. Build one of these and your work will go much faster. You'll need to clean and square the ends of your boards, but these pieces are too big for my shooting board. That's no problem. Just put them in the vise and plane in toward the middle from each corner. A sharp, finely set plane will slice right through that end grain, and you can use a square and a straight edge to make sure you get good ends. This is a technique worth learning. To make this build even simpler, I'm gonna do the whole thing with a single hand plane. This is a Stanley Victor number no. five. The Victor was just like a lower cost, more budget line that Stanley put out in the 1940s. They're still very good and less expensive than a normal Stanley plane. To make this even more versatile, I'm gonna use a pair of irons with it. Here's the iron that came with it, and you can see I've got a big aggressive curvature on that. This is gonna be like my four plane. It's gonna be for heavy stock removal and demand mentioning my boards. I've also got another iron that's more like a smoothing plane iron, mostly straight but with just a little bit of curvature. What's neat about this Victor plane is that it comes with a pretty wide mouth. It's kind of more of a carpentry plane. So this heavily cambered iron can stick out of that mouth and you can pass big thick shavings through here. Now, I know what you're thinking, wait a second, wait a second, isn't a big mouth bad when you're trying to put a surface on wood? Isn't it gonna tear out? when you use it with that finer, straighter iron. Well, yeah, that usually would be a problem, but red oak is just not a very tear-out prone wood. So I can put this blade in and it'll handle jointing, leveling, smoothing, shooting at the shooting board, a whole bunch of stuff. They do not call the number five the jack of all trades for nothing. It doesn't take long to get all my components cut and squared, and it's a small stack of parts. This build is not complicated, but we do need to take our time with the legs. Here's a nice digital rendering of the project. We recently upgraded all our graphics, and you'll see clearer, more detailed images if you get the plans for this project. Now, you can see how those legs have angled edges, they lean in, and they're notched to hold the aprons. 
and they have that OG detail at the foot. That's a lot of elements, and we need everything to come out right. When I'm making identical components, I like to stick them together with blue tape and super glue. This isn't strictly necessary, but it keeps everything perfectly lined up during layout. I'll use a straight edge and a roll of tape to lay out my OG foot. No fancy marking tools necessary here, but I do have instructions in the plans. Then I erase all the unnecessary lines and mark my waist. The legs slope in at 7 degrees, and it's really worth having a decent protractor for this angle. I'll link to one I like down in the description. Once you have that 7 degree setting, lock it in because that's the only angle you're going to need for the whole build. With the pieces stuck together, it's easy to transfer the measurements across the ends and then duplicate my layout on the other side. The pieces are too thick to cut at the same time, so I pull them apart and start on those long, angled cuts. This is a weird saw cut, kind of a rip cut and kind of a cross cut. You're mostly going along the grain, but also cutting across the fibers at that shallow seven degree angle. Here I am using my biggest, most aggressive rip saw, and it's freshly sharpened, but this is slow going. I was surprised. For the second piece, I used a fine tooth cross cut saw, and the cut was faster and easier. So I guess we should call this a cross cut and not try to use a rip saw. To cut out the OG foot, I'm using my shop-made turning saw with the Tools for Working Wood blade. They sell several different turning saw blades, and this is the most aggressive. If you're ordering blades to make the saw, get a couple of the heavy ones. I have no affiliation with them, it's just advice. I stayed just above my layout lines while I was sawing the curves, and then I did the final cleanup with a spoke shave, a curved file, and some 100 grit sandpaper. Take a little extra time here. This is the most artistic part of the piece, and you want graceful curves. Now it's time to make those aprons, and they just need a seven degree slope on each end, which is going to give the legs their seven degree splay. Mark that angle on both ends, and when you saw it, you'll want to keep things really straight and square. But here's a good trick for cleaning it up. Even though it's not a right angle, you can still shoot it. Get the corner against the fence of your shooting board and use your finger to line up the end grain with the side of the board. Hold the piece firmly and use the plane gently and you can still get a nice end. I do this with weird angles all the time and it works fine. You don't really need an adjustable shooting board. Just practice your technique and your angle will still be accurate. Make your first apron and then put your protractor away. You might have one angle that's seven degrees and one angle that's 7.5 degrees, and that makes no difference as long as both aprons are identical. So make sure you're totally happy with the first apron, then trace it directly onto your second one. Make sure your aprons match perfectly, and then we're ready to start assembling. You need to notch your legs to fit your aprons. It's just a simple cut down, but that shoulder needs to angle in at seven degrees to match the splay of the legs. This line will be very visible in the finished product, so take an extra second to knife and chisel your line and give your saw a perfectly square start. When your notches are done, you can test your aprons. Don't expect a perfect fit right off the saw. You're going to have little gaps, and you want to be detail-oriented here. Test your fit, make a little adjustment with a chisel, test it again, and get the tightest fit you can. Your legs are probably going to stick up past your aprons a little bit, so mark the spot where they meet the aprons and saw off the extra material. This edge will be hidden by the seat, so there's no need to plane it. Now that all the parts are done and fitted, it's time to sharpen up your iron, set your plane for a fine cut, and give all the show's surfaces their final finish. We're nailing this piece together so you need the surfaces done before the hardware goes in. You might be skeptical about using nails in a piece like this, but these aren't the wire nails you're probably used to. These are rectangular cut nails. They have a blunt tip, a tapered shape, and sharp corners. As you drive these nails, they wedge themselves into the wood and give you unbelievable hold. This project won't need a drop of glue or any fancy joints, and it should stay together for decades or longer. These cut nails will need a pilot hole, and I recently discovered this tapered drill bit with a carbide countersink on the shank. I'll link to a set of bits in the description, and you can find the exact bit that matches the taper of your nails, and it will also drill a little pocket for the nail head to sit in. But don't just go straight to the assembly. Using nails requires a little testing. Put a couple of pieces of scrap together, drill through them, and drive a nail. These nails are wider in one direction, and you need the wide part going along the grain to keep it from splitting the wood. You can see that this nail has stopped, and it's bending as I strike it. 
That means the drill bit is too small or the hole isn't deep enough. In this case, I think I just need to drill a little deeper. And my second nail goes in smoothly and gives me a tight hold with no splitting. Don't be afraid to ruin a few nails while you figure out all the correct sizes. You'll end up with a much better piece. I've got my legs set up in a pair of screw clamps with some rubber mat to keep them from sliding around. And I'm fitting my aprons into their notches and using my fingertip to feel for a flush fit. Then I'll drill one hole and drive my first nail. Having a single fastener gives me a little wiggle room if I need to adjust the angle of the apron just a tiny bit before I drill and nail one on the other side. Then I've still got a little room to adjust the angle of the legs before I drill and sink my last two nails. Do the same thing on the other side, and your main structure is done. My frame must have been just a tiny bit out of square because I had to take a little slice off one apron. This is no big deal. It's handmade furniture, and no one's ever going to notice. You need the top of your frame to be flush all around, so the seat is fully supported and doesn't crack when someone sits on it. It's easiest to get everything flush if you let your aprons stick up above your legs a little bit, and then you just plane them down so that everything matches. Finally, We'll attach the seat. Just like before, I like to sink a single nail and then pivot if things need a little adjustment. I'll add a second nail to lock everything in place, and then the seat won't move while I drive the rest of the nails. People often ask why I'm wearing hearing protection while I'm working with hand tools. Well, these are Bluetooth headphones, and I'm usually just listening to music or podcasts while I work. In this case, pounding those nails is a lot louder than you'd expect, and a little hearing protection is Pretty nice. In the beginning of this video, I said that the prototype was perfect, but I was getting ahead of myself. I used leftover stock, I worked fast, and I wasn't so focused on the details when I made the first one. I just wanted to see if the design would work. This time, I worked much more slowly. I fit things together carefully, and I concentrated on my surfaces. These differences really show up in the final piece. In both benches, all the measurements are exactly the same, but this one is undeniably more crisp and defined. I showed them both to my wife, and she immediately pointed to this one and said, that one, that one's better. And she's right, it is. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend building this thing twice, but repeating projects, doing them more than once, it does build your skills more quickly than just hopping from project to project the way most of us do. If you repeat something a few times, you will gain skills much more quickly. Now, if you feel like your skills are still at kind of a low level, this is probably a good project. It basically has no joinery and you're nailing it together. If your skills are up at a higher level, definitely build this, but don't get overconfident. The slope on those legs and the splay of them, well, that means you're going to run into some compound angles when you go to fit everything together. And that can be a challenge even for a more experienced woodworker. If you do want to build the piece, I have an excellent set of plans. I recently hired a 3D designer, and he has taken over the plans and given them a completely new look, much clearer, crisper, and more professional. I'm really proud to be offering these extra premium plans to my audience. And if you want to pick those up, you can go to rexkruger.com store or click the link down in the description. I've also got to mention my new book, Everyday Woodworking just released and available everywhere you get books. It is my complete from the ground up guide to starting woodwork with only 12 hand tools. It is a great read and I hope you'll check it out. And because book sales do not pay the rent around here, I've also got to mention my patrons on Patreon. And you can check that out at patreon.com slash Rex Kruger, where you can see all the rewards and extras I have for the people who really make these videos possible. I hope you enjoyed this project because I super enjoyed making it. Thanks for watching.